What is going on Cheddar Makers? This is going to be an action packed video with a few very interesting plays and market updates that you definitely won't want to miss. Let's get into it. First off, I want to update all of you on the unicorn play from last week. Short squeeze candidate and social media sentiment beast last week, Go EV. YouTube and Twitter followers were notified about this play last Friday when the share price was about $7.60 in the pre market. Which, by the way, if you are not a subscriber of this channel, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button as it does go a long way in helping the channel grow. So if you were able to catch last Friday's upload or any one of my tweets, you would have been able to get a pretty big piece of this 22% run up. And that doesn't include the weekly options which ran as high as 4 to 450 percent for the day. Now of course discord members were pinged about this buy alert on Thursday when the share price was about seven dollars and thirty cents. We were able to cash this in very quickly on Friday for a 150 percent return on some of our calls. Now of course anyone that's stuck in this play until the close of day would have been able to make well over 400 to 500 percent on some of those calls. That being said we are still in the October 8th calls just want to see if this momentum does continue and those calls as of Friday close are up nearly 200 percent. Now on Friday specifically we were following the options flow throughout the day using the query bot in our discord you can see consistent call flow here coming in throughout the day a ton of it on the ask side which shows more directional strength than the bid side of course and a lot of these contracts you could see are set to expire in January. But of note, there's still over 200,000 in premiums that were opened Friday for October. So that is signaling some decent whale bets on this one in the very short term. Short volume via Fintel here also indicates an increased short volume ratio of 57% despite the fact that we did run 22% on Friday. So this week will be very interesting to see specifically if the short volume ratio and just shorts in general continue to increase their positions, given the fact that the share price is on the rise. Alternatively, for the bulls, I want to see if social sentiment and continued buying pressure drive momentum further. In addition to the price action, of course, I'm going to be paying very close attention to the volume. I want to see if we're going to be able to trade more than 25 million shares, which were the amount of shares traded on Friday. If social sentiment and momentum begins to fade, for example, on Wall Street bets, I'm not seeing as many GoEV threads. And if Monday we see that GoEV is not trending on stock twits anymore, then in that case, we might see a little bit of that momentum fizzle and the share price might rapidly decline back to where it was at some of the lows last week. Typically, weekend breaks are known to be a momentum killer for some of these meme stocks. So it's going to be a very interesting battle on Monday and one that I'm definitely going to be paying attention to. Now, to give you an example of social sentiment and how it can influence share price, of course, this is just a potential correlation, but we can see right here around noon on Friday, which is when Canoe started to hit the trending page on stock twits. I did notice that the message volume actually significantly increased right around this time, 12 o'clock, because prior to 12, it wasn't trending. It was maybe getting a few messages every 20 to 30 seconds or so. After 12 o'clock, we were getting almost a message a second, if not faster. So there was a pretty rapid scale up and people talking about this ticker on the stock twits board. And I think we could see coincidentally here at 12 o'clock, a big run in the share price. Just some quick technicals here on the five minute and one minute charts. You could see that we topped out here at about 831, falling back down to VWAP. This sort of created a little bit of a zone of resistance. Now, like I said, right around here is when GoEV started turning on stock twits. Coincidentally, we ended up breaking this 838 level, which was acting as resistance and then once it came back down into this level it acted as support from then it just absolutely blew off the top and finished above nine dollars on the close now if you're looking for trade ideas just like this including buy and sell alerts weekly watch lists weekly voice calls as well as automated options flow data and dark pool data then go ahead and check out the link in the description below for cheddar-hq.com that is going to get you to our premium discord server and all you have to do to get your first month free is message me with first month refund when you sign up on the patreon and that is going to get you a full refund on your first month now next up i want to key in on a few key economic events that i'm looking at for next week and how we could pinpoint some very easy trade setups 
based on those events. As you know, last week we were following Nike, specifically to the downside. It did end up falling about 6% from when we talked about it in that video prior to earnings. And like I did mention to viewers as a warning, we were looking for that quarter over quarter slowdown. This was in large part due to many factors, including their Vietnam factory shutdowns, inflation in discretionary goods remaining elevated, as well as market participants just factoring in the high valuation. From the economics calendar for next week, on Friday, Friday, October 1st, we will get the latest consumer spending data. And I think that if we see a slight decrease in this real consumer spending data, that's really just going to end up falling in line with reduced revenues in some of these consumer discretionaries. A quick scan on Finviz here. And by the way, this is my favorite go to scanner. We could find ourselves a very similar play with shoe that is going to be ticker S H O O, which is Steve Madden's footwear of note. This is also trading at a very similar price to earnings to Nike. Of course, Nike was at about 46. This has since dropped off because the share price has fallen. Steve Madden here tops the list at a PE ratio of 50. And just another interesting stat that I wanted to mention the short interest and especially the short percentage of the float is starting to increase a little bit. Now that matters because as more and more institutions begin to load into heavier short positions, that is at the end of the day, technically going to help drive the share price down. And on the daily chart here, it does look like we have a bit of a reversal trend here. We were in this ascending channel before, consolidating somewhere between 40 to $45. Looks like we've got a reversal of trend, hitting the all-time high mark over here, $45, getting rejected. And now we're in this descending channel. I think that this is a great time to assess potentially entering a short position, especially as we are at the top of this descending channel. It's going to give you a significantly better entry. Just a quick example, if you were to enter the short here at $39, well, technically on a longer term, you might be correct. But if had you entered over here at $43, you would have given yourself a much better entry and therefore a much better return on your short investment. I guess maybe I should say short trade because is a short really ever an investment? And aside from this descending channel, I'm paying very close attention to this 38 to 39 demand zone. Once the price breaks below this 38 to 39 zone and we have consecutive closes below $38, I think that there really is nothing saving shoe from a big downtrend below the 200 day moving average and below all of this buying volume, unless we see some spectacular earnings come out on November 2nd. Uh, really quick update on Riot here as well. Despite the fact that we did see this 6% drop on Monday, I'm using the four hour chart here. And that was when the news of China Bitcoin crackdowns emerged. It looks like we're still holding on to the bottom of this wedge quite well. So to put it simply, if Bitcoin buyers continue to come in and buy these dips on panic, then I really don't see why Riot wouldn't continue to show strength as well. If Bitcoin shows strength, we should see a continued movement along the bottom of this wedge, and then hopefully a backtest all the way to the major 200 day moving average. That is going to net you a 20% return on equity, from the current share price of $27.94, all the way up to what looks like about $34.50. And lastly, a very quick update on the indexes. Specifically, we're gonna look at the SPY as we usually do. A few indicators of note, we're sitting on monthly anchored VWAP. That is gonna be this thin blue line. I'm not sure if you could see it right over here. And the biggest reason that I like using monthly anchored VWAP is because we usually end up staying above or below that metric. If we're in a downtrend, we'll stay below. If we're in an uptrend, we'll stay above. So I'm gonna be looking to see if we reject off of here and confirm that bias. If we do break out of this metric, then I'm gonna be looking one step further that is going to be the volume profile. The next key volume shelf is going to be 448. Now, the reason this is important is because this is a big area of buyers. I want to see if we run into this area of supply and get rejected or break out. Now, personally, I'm still not biased on the short term upside, despite the fact that we've had this very nice bounce and what looks like it's on the way to a V-shaped recovery. I'm going to need to see a break and hold above this 20 day moving average that is gonna confirm another potential mini uptrend. Like I said, if you look at the last five breaks of the 20 day moving average, we've got an 8% run, a 2.4% run, almost a 4% run, a 3.5% run, and then another almost 3% run over here. So like I said in the last video, I really don't think that we're quite out of the woods yet. We could easily see bulls get trapped here as we get rejected between 446 and 448 to the downside. And on the flip side, we could also see bears getting burned here. If we do break out of the 20 day, we break out of 448 and then that pushes us back to all time highs. And by the way, there is a 50% off discount running right now. So if you're looking to get a pro plan for trading view, 
Go ahead and check out the link in the description below. The 50% off is only running for the next two weeks, I believe. Lastly, if you have not yet signed up to Webull, they're also offering you two free stocks if you sign up. The link for that is also going to be in the description below. Hope you all enjoyed this update. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I'll see you all in the next one. What is going on, Cheddar Makers? This is going to be... Fuck, sorry, I hit the mic.